Hi guys, it's Mrs. Glenn. Welcome to the 5.1 Extra Practice. So we're going to work on classifying triangles today. So just a little review with three acute angles mean that it's acute. If there is one obtuse angle, that means that it is an obtuse. If there's one right angle, it means it's a right triangle. And if the three congruent angles, that means it's an equilateral triangle. So looking over here at the right-hand side, you can see this figure has um, A, B, C, D, E, F all labeled with some symbols showing congruency and a right triangle. So for C, D, E triangle, which is this triangle over here, you can see that it has a right triangle symbol in the corner, so that means it's a right triangle. B, C, E, which is over here, this little one, that one has an obtuse angle at C, and then for ABE, which is the one that has the three corners that are all congruent, that would be an equilateral. And then BDE, which is this big one right over here, would be an obtuse because of angle E. And then CFE, which would be this little one over here, that would be an acute because it has all three acute angles. All right, and then by sides, you have three congruent sides, which means it's an equilateral triangle, and you have two congruent. Remember I told you like there's two S's in the word, so it's an isosceles triangle, and if there's no congruent sides, it would be scalene. So looking at the figure to the right for six, seven, and eight, JKM is right here, this big one, all the way around. So we only have two sides that are um, congruent, so it would be a scalene, JKM. No, I take that back, it's not congruent, so that's kind of tricky. So you see this little tick mark right here it does not mean that it's uh, congruent all the way across, it just means that it's congruent to JN. So because JM is um, not the same length as JK and also not the same length as KM, they're all three different lengths. That's a tricky one. All right, number seven, KLN is the little one that's in the middle. So you can see two of the sides are congruent, so that's an isosceles. And then JKN, which is the equilateral triangle with all three sides are congruent. And then down here at the bottom, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're going to identify it using sides and angles. So we can see for number nine, we have a right triangle symbol and we have two sides that are congruent, so that's isosceles. And then we have an obtuse angle with number 10 and no tick marks, so that's an obtuse scalene. And then for number 11, all of the angle measures are the same, so that's equilateral, which means all the sides are the same, so that's equal angular. So I'm sorry, I said that backwards. All the sides are the same, so it's equilateral, and all the angles are the same, so it's equal angular. And then for number 12, we have no tick marks showing congruency, so the angle measures are also not congruent. So that would be an acute because the insides are all smaller than 90 degrees and scaling because no congruent leg sizes. And then number 13, the only thing they gave us was a right triangle symbol. So we have um, a right and scaling because no sides are congruent. And then the last one, 97 degrees is greater than 90, so it's obtuse. And no, we have a five foot and a five foot on the bottom. So that's two sides that are congruent, so it's an isosceles. All right, 15 through 20, we're gonna use the diagram on the right. If PR bisects angle SRT and U is the midpoint of RT, classify each triangle by its angles and sides. So UQR, which is UQR over here, this triangle, that would be an obtuse and isosceles because it has 120 degrees and two sides are congruent. And then for RST, which is RST, this big one over here, we can see 60, that would also be 60 and 60. And then that would mean that it's an equilateral also all the way around because this would be eight, 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 eight. So 16, 16, and 16. And then also the corners would all be, or the angles would all be 60 degrees. And then SRQ, which is this top right angle up here, a right triangle, so that means that we have equal angle, or no, right for the angle measure. And then we have eight millimeters here, or eight meters here and 16 meters there. 
And so therefore it must be scaling because none of the sides are congruent. And then PRT, which is here to here down, so this upside down triangle, we have obtuse because this angle measure is greater than 90 degrees. You have 16 over here, 16 over here, but this one is not 16, so it has to be isosceles. And then TQU, which is this little triangle down here in the middle. So we have a 60. This must be 60 because 120 plus 60 is 180. Therefore, this one must be 62 or 60 also. So all three corners are 60 degrees. So therefore, it's an equal um, angular triangle. And then the sides are all the same measure as well because this tick mark shows that this tick mark is 8 meters. So 8 meters, 8 meters, and 8 meters. So equal, angular, equilateral. And then PQT was this triangle right here. So we have right with the right symbol because that's verti our vertical angles. So this vertical angle would be also a right angle. And then you have no sides that are the same, so it's scaling. All right, so for the rest of the questions, I'm going to do every other one with you. And then, um, wait, that's going to start on the next set of questions, I believe. So anyway, we're going to start with side measures. So to find the type of angle triangle, we have to use the distance formula for each of the side lengths. So we're going to plug it into the distance formula and solve, and you get the square root of 68. For KL, you would get the square root of 68. For JL, you get the square root of 72. So because we have two sides that are the same, it's isosceles. You don't have to worry about actually putting that in your calculator because we're just looking to see if they're the same. We're not asking for the length. For number 22, same thing, plug it into the distance formula. So we get square root of 41, square root of 85, and the square root of 130. That's also scaling because it is not, any of them are not the same. And then the last one for number 23, plug that into the distance formula, you get 260, square root of 260, square root of 130, and square root of 130. So because we have two of them that are the same, we have another isosceles. All right, now we're gonna go to the other side where it's solving for sides with algebra. So if triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle, solve for both X and Y. So in order to do this, we are having to set up a couple different equations. So we have 18Y minus 41, 41 equals 49. And we know that these two are equal because it tells us the triangle is an equilateral triangle. So I can solve for Y doing this one. And then I'm going to do the same thing. 49 equals the other side, 3X plus 1 to solve for X. So I add 41 to each side divide by 18, and I get y equals 5. And then I set up the other equation, 3x plus 1 equals 49. Subtract 1, divide by 3, and I get 16. All right, so this is what I was talking about earlier, where I'm going to have you now try to do this problem on your own and see if you get these two answers. So go ahead and pause the video, try this problem on your own, and check your work. Okay, really pause it. I know you're just waiting for me to continue. No, seriously, pause it right now. Okay, number three. So if triangle MNP is an equilateral triangle again, find the X and measure of each side. So if it's equilateral, they're all three sides are the same. So we're going to set two sides that have the same variable equal to each other. If we set them with two opposite variables, we wouldn't be able to solve for Y. This problem doesn't have Y in it, so we're good for that but just for future reference on any other kind of problem. So I'm just going to solve for x. doesn't matter which two I pick. So I'm going to subtract x first and then add 25 to the other side. So then I divide by 3 and I get x equals 13. And then it says find x and the measure of each side. Well, each side is the same, so I just have to plug 13 back up into any of them. So I pick the easiest one, which is this one on the side. So 13 plus 14 is 27. So the side length is 27, not 27 degrees, but 27. All right, so before you start number four on your own, if you notice it says isosceles this time, not equilateral. So you're not going to just pick whatever two you want to pick because they're not the same length. So make sure you pick the two that are the same length and not uh, two that aren't. 
and then go ahead and try number four on your own and hit pause and come back and see if you have these two answers or that you come to those two answers. All right, number five, triangle WXY is an isosceles triangle. With WX is congruent to XY, find X and the measure of each side. So like I said earlier, we want to make sure that we're setting these two equal to each other because this side is longer than the other two, making it an isosceles triangle. So we solve for X. So I added 77 to the right. I'm going to subtract 3X from, to the left and then divide by 3. So I get X equals 27. And then I just have to plug 27 back into one of the sides. So I picked this one on the side. And then you end up with 85, because 81 plus 4 is 85. So then Wx, when we plug x back in to this side, you end up getting 85 again. And then on the bottom, when you plug it in, this one is our longer side. So 5 times 27 minus 31, you get 104. So the, angle, uh, the measure of each leg is 85, 85, and 104. All right, number 6. And, uh, triangle PQR is an equilateral triangle, and um, PQ is equal to that, QR is equal to that, PR is equal to that. Find the X and the measure. So that's a lot of information. I, um, please make sure you're writing down like an image of it and putting down what they actually tell you because it will be able to visualize it a lot better. So I just drew the diagram and placed the binomials where they belong based on the question. And now it tells me to find the measure of X. If it's equilateral, I can pick any of the two and make them equal to each other. So I just pick those two, and then I just solve for x. So I subtracted 15x to the left, subtract one to the right, divide by three, and I get x equals three. Then I plug three back into any of the binomials and solve. So 45 plus 10 is 55. So the length of the legs are 55 and x equals three. Go ahead and hit pause and try to do number seven on your own and see if you get those two answers that are in the corner. And then number eight, same thing, but this time it is um, isosceles again. So I just drew the figure. And I'm going to pick 7x minus 15 and set it equal to 10x minus 42. Solve for x. And I get 9. Plug 9 back into one of the sides. Um, and I get 10 times 9 minus 42, which is 48 for the length of ml. And then for mx, plug 9 back in, 7 times 9 minus 15. I'm sorry. Why did I write mx? That wasn't supposed to be mx. It's supposed to be mk. Let me fix it. There we go. Um, and then the last one, kl, plug 9 back in, 4 times 9 minus 5 is 31. So you can see that this is why it's an isosceles. Two of the legs are the same, and the other one is not. All right, number nine, you're going to go ahead and hit pause. Try to do number nine on your own and see if you get those two answers. And then for number 10, it says uh, triangle GHI is an isosceles triangle with GI is congruent to HI. If GH is three more than X, HI is 17 less than 4 times x and gi is 45 less than 6 times x, find x, and the measure of each side. So this is just a um, literal translation of the words into numbers and signs. So I took gh, which is this side, is 3 more than x. I'm sorry, this side. 3 more than x, so x plus 3. hi, which is this side, is 17 less than 4 times x, so 4x minus 17. And the last one, gi is 45 less, so minus 45, 6 times x, so 6x minus 45. And then I can do the same thing I did for the other questions, setting the left and the right equal to each other and solving for x. And I get 14, and then it has me plug 14 back into each side to be able to find the length of each one. So I have all three, and you can see these two are the same, and this one's the different one, making it an isosceles triangle. All right, so go ahead and use this um, and your textbook pages to help you do 5.1 quiz on big ideas. See you later.